We are keeping an eye on the confirmation hearings of Amy Coney Barrett. Yes, she's in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee and she's about to deliver. The Judiciary remarks. Committee reading their opening statements inside the hearing room today. Of course, just 22 days to go until Election Day. Democrats have said there should be no nomination until uh, after the election, arguing this has never been done. You even heard Republicans acknowledging that, but indicating they will move forward in their push to fill Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg's seat before Election Day. We have been witness uh, to some of the uh, 2020 gremlins, if you will, with some of the Zoom calls. Uh, we were expecting to hear from the former dean of Notre Dame Law School uh, via Zoom to talk about um, Judge Barrett. Let's listen in to the hearing room and, and see if they're going to be able to make contact with her. Judge Barrett, we will hear from you. Any progress with uh, Professor O'Hara? Okay, Judge, if you don't mind, you can take your mask off, please. Raise your right hand. Stand up, please. <clears throat> Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give this committee is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. Welcome to the committee, to your family. Y'all have uh, done a great job over there. Uh, the floor is yours, Judge. This is on. Ranking Member Feinstein and members of the committee, I'm honored and humbled to appear before you today as a nominee for Associate Justice of the Supreme Court. I thank the President for entrusting me with this profound responsibility, as well as for the graciousness that he and the First Lady have shown my family throughout this process. I thank Senator Young for introducing me, as he did at my hearing, to serve on the Seventh Circuit. And I also thank Senator Braun for his support. And while she could not be with us via uh, the satellite, I am also grateful to former Dean Patty O'Hara of the Notre Dame Law School. She hired me as a professor nearly 20 years ago, and she has been a mentor, colleague, and friend ever since. I thank the members of this committee and your other colleagues in the Senate who've taken the time to meet with me since my nomination. It's been a privilege to meet you. As I said when I was nominated to serve as a justice, I'm used to being in a group of nine, my family. Nothing is more important to me, and I'm very proud to have them behind me. My husband, Jesse, and I have been married for 21 years. He has been a selfless and wonderful partner every step of the way. I once asked my sister, why do you think marriage is hard? People are always saying that. I think it's easy. And she looked at me and said, well, maybe you should ask Jesse if he agrees with that. <laughs> I decided not to take her advice because I know that I am far luckier in love than I deserve. Jesse and I are parents to seven wonderful children our oldest daughter, Emma, is a sophomore in college who just might follow her parents into a career in the law. Next is Vivian, who came to us from Haiti. When Vivian arrived, she was so weak that we were told she might never talk or walk normally. But now she deadlifts as much as the male athletes in our gym, and I assure you she has no trouble talking. Tess is 16. And while she shares her parents' love for the liberal arts, she also has a math gene that seems to have skipped her parents' generation. John Peter joined us shortly after the devastating earthquake in Haiti. And Jesse, who brought him home, still describes the shock on JP's face when he got off the plane in wintertime Chicago. Once that shock wore off, JP assumed the happy-go-lucky attitude that is still his signature trait. Liam is smart, strong, and kind, and to our delight, he still loves watching movies with mom and dad. Ten-year-old Juliet is already pursuing her goal of becoming an author by writing multiple essays and short stories, one of which she recently submitted for publication. And our youngest, Benjamin, um, is at home with friends. Benjamin has Down syndrome, and he is the unanimous favorite of the family. He was watching the hearing this morning, I'm told, and he was calling out our names as he saw the kids in the back. My own siblings are here, some in the hearing room and some nearby. 
Carrie, Megan, Eileen, Amanda, Vivian, and Michael are my oldest and dearest friends. We've seen each other through both the happy and hard parts of life, and I am so grateful that they are with me now. My parents, Mike and Linda Coney, are watching from their New Orleans home. My father was a lawyer and my mother was a teacher, which explains why I became a law professor. More important, my parents modeled for me and my six siblings a life of service, principle, faith, and love. I remember preparing for a grade school spelling bee against a boy in my class, and to boost my confidence, my dad saying, anything boys can do, girls can do better. And at least as I remember it, I spelled my way to victory. I received similar encouragement from the devoted teachers at St. Mary's Dominican, my all-girls high school in New Orleans. When I went to college, it never occurred to me that anyone would consider girls less capable than boys. My freshman year, I took a literature class filled with upperclassmen English majors. And when I did my first presentation, which was on breakfast at Tiffany's, I feared I had failed. But my professor took the time to talk to me. She filled me with confidence about how well I had done, and she became a mentor. And when I graduated with a degree in English, she gave me Truman Capote's collected works as a gift. Although I considered graduate studies in English, I decided that my passion for words was better suited to deciphering statutes than novels. I was fortunate to have wonderful legal mentors, in particular, the judges for whom I clerked. The legendary Judge Lawrence Silberman of the DC Circuit gave me my first job in the law, and he continues to teach me today. He was by my side during my Seventh Circuit hearing he swore me in at my investiture, and he's cheering me on from his living room right now. I also clerked for Justice Scalia. And like many law students, I felt like I knew the justice before I ever met him, because I had read so many of his colorful, accessible opinions. More than the style of his writing, though, it was the content of Justice Scalia's reasoning that shaped me. His judicial philosophy was straightforward. A judge must apply the law as it is written, not as she wishes it were. Sometimes that approach meant reaching results that he did not like. But as he put it in one of his best known opinions, that is what it means to say that we have a government of laws and not of men. Justice Scalia taught me more than just law. He was devoted to his family, resolute in his beliefs, and fearless of criticism. And as I embarked on my own legal career, I resolved to maintain that same perspective. There's a tendency in our profession to treat the practice of law as all-consuming while losing sight of everything else. We're helping you go big for your at-home Halloween. We're giving you tips to make some impressive and eye-catching treats. Plus, crafting isn't just for the little ones. We're live at a local craft studio showing how grown-ups can benefit from getting creative. And every year, there are those costumes everyone's looking for. We've got the top Halloween looks for 2020. It's all today on SA Live. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from the KSET 12 studios, this is SA Live. Hello and happy Monday. Yes, all eyes, see the little eyes, are on Halloween. Just a little more than two <laughs> weeks away. Are you ready? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike Osterhage. And I'm Fiona Gorstiza. Whether you're going trick-or-treating or not, I see what you <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yes. Okay, Halloween sweets are of course a must, okay? But for some of us, you know, uh, you know, creating something big, not that easy. No, mm -hmm. but the man who is just just an artist, a genius when it comes to this, Shaheen Tajbaksh, the pastry chef at You Name It, I Bake It is here. And these creations, again, you look at them and go, how do you do this? How are you? It's so good, good to see you. Good seeing you again. Yes, sir. All right, we are going to start right here. And warm, humid weather and pastries don't mix. Mm -hmm. That's why this is kind of <laughs> leaning over. But what? This is a croquembouche. Croquembouche, yes, sir. What is that? Uh, so uh, basically, it's a 
uh, puff pastry uh, filled with a uh, pastry cream. Uh, so it's like, you know, cream puff. Mm -hmm. And then you make a hard, uh, a soft uh, crunch uh, with a, the sugar. And that glues it together. And that glues it all together and, and you make, just make a tower. Uh, okay. And the word uh, croque, croque and bouche actually comes from uh, the two French words uh, croque and bouche, which is a uh, crunch of the mouth. Oh, okay. Uh, ah. And this was a wedding tradition too, It's a right? wedding tradition, yes sir. So okay. usually what they do is they have the big, you know, croque and bouche uh, standing there and with a silver sword or uh, a silver mallet or even a champagne bottle, they'll go and crack the whole thing and catch all the pieces. Okay, so we're making a mini version of this and I've got yes, some sir. little tiny cream puffs here, just filling them and then I'll just do a couple of them here for purposes of time and just pop it right in there. And instead of the sugar, which you would have to do all that, I can just use a little bit of caramel and these yes, will sir. stick together? Yes, sir. Okay, and I'll do this one like this and kind of... So if somebody's attempting oh, this that. for the first time, what are some things they should remember? So uh, when making the uh, the cream puff, uh, you're just cool. basically uh, putting everything into a pot, get it uh, until you smell the... Uh, smell of uh, the butter mm -hmm. uh, baking, and then you throw it into a mixer, and then you have to make sure you add one egg at a time. Once you completely see that your egg has you know, completely dissolved in it, then you uh, pipe it into uh, onto a cookie sheet and bake for 20 minutes, and it goes from a small dime-sized uh, thing onto However big you want to yeah, make just, it, right? Just meow. <laughs> I'm so, that is amazing that that sticks together with that uh, with that caramel <laughs> sauce like that, especially again out here in the humidity. And you can just uh, do whatever, and what a great little dessert. So now we're gonna shift over to that creation over there. Yes, sir. Wow. So, that's a gravity pumpkin cake. <laughs> uh, so it has the uh, the top pumpkin pouring out the eyeballs. Uh huh. Uh, and it's. It looks difficult, but it's actually a really easy cake to make. And so, the trick behind it is, mm -hmm. it's made up of what? So it's basically just a total of six bunk cakes uh -huh. uh, stacked together. Uh, you slightly crumb coat each one, uh, throw on your uh, orange fondant, and then with the fondant tool, uh, follow the lines of the bunt pan, and print so, out any type of a pumpkin face that you like from the internet and you know trace that yeah the eyeballs just are just as the easy to make somewhere. they're uh little bitty fondant balls so <laughs> fondant's kind of like a baker's play-doh almost yes sir you can do anything with it fondant uh it yeah definitely uh just like uh like you said play-doh or uh clay yeah. you know and can you so. buy it at the store like this you can okay or uh you can even make your own uh, it's just a matter of uh, marshmallows and confectioner sugar. Okay, and so we have some right here, and we're gonna do little mini versions of this. A simpler so, version, yeah, right? We've got okay. Some cupcakes, and here's the piece of fondant that we have. So you want to get your frosting first? Oh, frosting, frosting first. Okay. First. The frosting wet bag, mm -hmm. and pop uh, it on here. Pipe it on. Okay. So that'll there make the go. fondant stick, and obviously. Then correct. Okay. And then put the fondant piece on, and then your uh, colored iris part okay the fun iris so uh, either orange or okay there we go that and then a little bit of glue on there if you will correct and then and then the black yep. and do it like that and then i think fiona has the uh, paintbrush and red dye uh i do yes you do. <laughs> and then uh just oh, you a, put little bloodshot yeah, eyeballs yeah on put it. little you know squiggly eyes how fun. sorry it's okay <laughs> so and this would be something great if you bake up a bunch of these cupcakes you have some some kids together a little you know halloween party instead of trick-or-treating perhaps and you can decorate all these or do it Correct. with your kids at home too yes sir very simple and fun idea and the creativity behind it you can just go nuts with it can't yes. you all right. all right real quick before we go what's one of the craziest things someone that's ever had you try uh, you know, make? craziest thing that someone had me make uh i would assume this so this? far. <laughs> okay. well, if I come up with some wild idea, how far in advance do I have to let you know? Uh, so right now we're booking like a month in advance. So right oh, now wow. we're uh, booking uh, mid-November. Uh, so just give us a call and we'll, you know, put you on the books. So if I want the, the Horn of Plenty for Thanksgiving, call now. Correct. Uh, pies. Uh, okay. We'll do all your pies for you. Cookies. Ooh. So. Ooh. 
That sounds good. All, All right. right. Thank you so much for more information on You Name It, I Bake It. Just head to our website, essaylive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Well, of course, it is not just time for all things baking and pumpkin spice. It is a time for fall crafting as well. Yes, and on this Mom Day Monday, our Jen Tobias Strusky takes us to one of the newest crafting studios in town. Pinspiration for some water marbling and string art. Hey, Jen. <laughs> Hi guys, yes, we're all about the fall crafts here at Pinspiration in Shabano Park. Now this is a studio unlike any other in the city and Christine Marr, the owner, joins me now. I have to tell you, I love crafts, so I'm in such a happy place right now. Just so happy to be here and we're all about the fall crafts today, right? We are, I'm so excited to have you guys here and introduce you guys to Pinspiration San Antonio. We have so many different crafts and right now it is all about fall and Halloween. Halloween. So we've got a bunch of the different fall crafts out here and Pinspiration is really based off of the most popular crafts that you see on Pinterest. So if you see it on Pinterest, chances are you're going to be able to find it here. So we've got what's really popular are these beaded wreaths. Mm -hmm. You come in here, you paint them, you add all the different flowers. We have all the embellishments and everything that you want to add, the ribbon, flowers, beads. Obviously we're getting close to Halloween. Mm -hmm. So we've got a countdown to Halloween for those people Cute. that just totally are into it. Can't wait. <laughs> We've got fall crafts from our string art to these beautiful slotted pumpkins, which is a set of three. Acrylic pours where you can pour over a pumpkin, you can do a canvas, all of that. And then some of the most famous things that you're going to see right now on Pinterest are the mandala dotting, which was the black pumpkins up there. So you can come in and yes. do that. But water marbling is so popular right now. And you can see it on Pinterest and we've got a bunch of samples right here so we've got here. some Halloween samples mm -hmm. in the wine bottles along with some fall and it's just beautiful you pick your colors and then at the end you can add flowers to it and it, it's beautiful on the mantle or on a table so okay. I'm so glad that this is what you wanted to try today <laughs> yes so you told me to add the color I'm gonna go uh -huh. with the Halloween look so I added the black I yes. hope that's enough uh -huh. and then I'm gonna go ahead and add some purple this is really cool look I already just like the water, the way uh -huh. it looks. And then I guess this is orange. Ooh. And the quick here is you just got to make sure you do it really, really quickly. Okay. Um, and see. then you can dip it once. We painted the bottle first because it makes the paints pop out a little bit more, especially for Halloween. Right. So you have the white bottle. So, so just, just grab the tip. Yes. Okay. Uh huh. And then and then dunk and ready? turn. Uh huh. Dunk and turn. Ooh. Yeah. One more time. That is perfect. Okay. It's beautiful. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, so we put that tray down because um, it beautiful. is got a lot of water on it. Uh, cool. The beautiful thing is that you're going to be able to do it again and add some more color if you want, or you can leave it uh, as you see it. I'll leave um, it that way. And this is cool because it takes all the color out. Um, and now we're going to try the pumpkin. Uh, but what's really neat, you saw earlier, I was adding a spider. And I love that you guys include all these fun little embellishments that we can add. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, of course, if you see here, I'm going to add a flower. And then you have your, your centerpiece. Um, we'll try to do the pumpkin here, mm -hmm. but really cool. And I hadn't seen this before, mm -hmm. so I'm glad you have this yeah, for us. To, so we're gonna go with, which color should we put more? Whatever color you like best. It's All a pumpkin, right. orange is obviously, you can't go wrong. Go with yellow. Um, and then we've got a beautiful green, which is one of my favorite water marbling colors okay. and some red, right. some more fall colors. This, um, is, so this is really easy too. So you could do one or you can do multiple, but once again, that's also something that looks beautiful on a mantle just dip it. or anywhere. And then, yeah, just go ahead, dip it. Uh-huh. Pick oh, it up. Look at that. Uh-huh. <laughs> Every time it gets me. This is so fun, guys. I'm sorry, I could be here all day. Uh, you guys, this is a lot of fun. It's a, really easy, but you are here to help. They have classes, they have parties. They're actually getting ready for a party. As soon as we're done, those people are gonna be coming in. But all of this you can do, you just have to give them a call, set up an appointment. They are here to guide you, but I love that you have options for people to work off of. So. And what's even better is that if, even if you come with just one girlfriend or a bunch of girlfriends or a date night, nobody has to do this 
same thing. So Love it. if you are doing uh, water marbling, somebody else doesn't have to do that. They could do the string art if they want. Exactly. Um, they could paint. We have over 50 Got different it. choices of canvases. And then we have all this fun stuff. So you can really make it your own. You can Perfect. add, we've got pumpkins and bats and skeletons and beads um, and then all this different ribbon. So whatever you Lovely. decide to create. Well, we're not done. Christine, we will be coming okay. back out here again, guys, to show you some of the stuff that the kids can do. But I'm already having a great time. You guys know I love to craft. <laughs> oh, yeah. Looking up, looking forward you to more fun stuff. Fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Still ahead on SA Live. Have you picked out your Halloween costume yet? If you need some ideas, we're showing you the top looks for 2020. But first, we are putting our noses to the test. We've got some fall scents and some rather... Hmm, strange aromas. We're gonna test that out, a little blind uh, nose test, find out exactly what these smells are coming up. Welcome back to SA Live. Well, who doesn't love those classic fall scents mm -hmm. of pumpkin, apple, and cinnamon? Mm. You know, but some folks also love a little different aromas. Black pepper, that's mm. a good one. Fresh hay, ooh, yes, even dirt. Yeah, to each his own. Mm. Though the fragrance company, Demeter, makes something for everyone. No matter your sniffer, they sent us a few fall smells and a few not so fall smells. And we thought we'd play a little game and try to figure out, eh, what the smell. <laughs> <laughs> she was thinking up that one, you know. Okay, this is a blindfold test. Mm -hmm. uh, wait, let me get this on here. Yes, okay. So we each have the smells in front of us. Okay. We're each going to guess. You go first, and these Two. are all four different. All right. Am I first? Okay. Yeah. Here's my... It's facing the right way, right? If I, <laughs> if I push it, is it? You'll find out. Is it? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Heart. That's why I asked. You guys are mean. Mm. Ooh, I can smell that one from here. Oh, can you? Okay. Oh, that's like a. Oh, it's like a apple cinnamon. Uh, no. What is it? Maple oh. syrup. It was really sweet. Okay. Okay, mine. Maple syrup. Okay. Oh, what, are my <laughs> what did you do? Oh, Lord. Did you? Did you? Was it facing the right way? Well, it's all over my hand now. <laughs> Great. Like we need I can't sniff because Ted's laughing. <laughs> um, I don't know why I'm laughing. It's not very fallish, I don't think. Mm hmm. What is it? I, I can't. Ew! Lobster? Oh, I'm so glad I didn't get that one. Now I'm scared. God, seriously? Go. <laughs> oh, no, okay. All right. Where is it here? Oh, great. <laughs> great. Where's the. Th oh, it's on me. <laughs> no, here, wait, I gotta get the point. Yeah, where did you go? Did you get it? Mm, mm, okay, um, <laughs> scented scripts. Um, I would say pumpkin? Uh, what is it? Oh, it smells. Puppy's breath. Really? That smells good. Puppy's breath is good. Okay, mm, real quick, real okay. quick. I gotta use this hand because this one smells like lobster. I spray, yeah. <laughs> oh, coffee. Oh, yay, we got one. <laughs> Okay. Uh, again, the company makes these scents called uh, Demeter, and it has smells that you'll love: cranberry apple pie, pumpkin pie. Mm -hmm. But they also have things like kitten fur, PB and J, fresh paint, and new baby. Oh, I just smell new baby. No baby babies were harmed. We have a link to their website, so you can check it out. Just go to salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. So, with all these unusual scents, we're wondering what are the strange scents that you love, like gasoline, money, wet dog, Ooh. not wet dog, but puppy's breath. <laughs> puppy's breath. That was good. I liked it. Okay, so that's our question of the day. Share your comments on social media. Tag us at SA Live KSAT, and you might see your answer a little later on. Is in that puppy's breath down there? The show. Uh, if if I got it, yeah, you can try. Did it? Did I? Did I? I want to smell. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind well, kind of, sort of. Okay, yeah, from the okay. smells you love to the looks you'll love. Every year there are those costumes that everyone has to have. So we have a roundup of some of the top Halloween looks for this year. Halloween is 
is less than a month away. So even though costume parties and trick-or-treating may be a little different, getting all dressed up can still be part of the fun. Here to chat about what's trending this season is lifestyle expert John Salas. Hey there, John. Hey, Fiona, thank you for having me. Excited to chat Halloween today. Well, and I love that you are from San Antonio. I am, I am. The roots always bring us back. You know, I can't get enough of our Alamo City, especially our breakfast tacos. I miss those wherever I am. So this season for Halloween, what is going to be popular? Oh my God, this Halloween is going to be, of course, very different compared to any years past, but it's going to be so much fun because there have been so many cultural things going on from like what we're watching on Netflix, the things we're seeing in the news. And you know, Halloween is always that time of year where we kind of like poke fun at things that just happen, you know? So one of the most trending costumes, believe it or not, is 2019 as a whole. So we're very nostalgic about what life was pre-COVID. And so, you know, we're gonna see people dressing up as their favorite memories from the year past, but also poking fun at things that have popped up this year. Like we saw Katy Perry dressing up as hand sanitizer. So you can definitely expect costumes like that or things that just kind of poke fun at our new reality and try to bring a little more laughter and brevity to everything that we're going through. Oh, totally. Now, I mean, and the hand sanitizer toilet paper roll combo will probably be popular, uh, right? I mean, we, we all know the struggle. We were there. So it's like, you know, Halloween is a time to have a little bit of fun with it. Right. Okay, what's next? What's next? Tiger King is also rising up to the list as one of the number one most popular costumes. Obviously, whether you're Team Joe Exotic or Carol Baskin. I mean, that is going to be trending. The best part of it is it's like super DIY friendly. I mean, you can get some tie dye and, you know, like a daisy ring a crown up here and, you know, you're set to go with Team Carol. Or if you're going to side with Team Joe Exotic, you know, you got to get the leopard print. But um, it's, it's stuff that you can easily find at a thrift shop or just find on like online. But another costume that's also super popular this year, we've been hearing about it, is the Karen mask and also Dr. Fauci. You know, obviously these are characters that are just kind of like popped up because of the news. Fauci being the authority when it comes to like health. You know, in New York, we saw a lot of cupcakes with his face on it. So we can expect those costumes popping up. And then with Karen, you know, now she's like the, the queen of men. So we can definitely expect her to be like knocking on our door trick or treating. And of course, Baby Yoda just keeps growing in popularity, right? Yes. Last year with The Mandalorian, I mean, he was super popular. And then we saw him actually pop up on ugly Christmas sweaters. Like, who knew that he was going to be like the king of our, of our holidays? And so people have been itching to find a reason to dress up as him again. And this Halloween, you can expect from the little ones in our family, the tots, to the grown up people, you know, people are going to be dressing up as Yoda as our favorite Star Wars characters. And then, you know, also Halloween is a time where we always celebrate our heroes. But this year, instead of going for like Superman and Batman, which were like the top picks last year, this year it's almost like to pay respect and homage to those who have been like fighting this COVID battle with the So we can expect see people dressing up as doctors and nurses, but more in an honorable way than before when it was more as a costume. And then lastly, because, you know, it wouldn't be a San Antonio Halloween if we didn't talk about the Mexican influence of Trump. But obviously, Dia de los Muertos, who doesn't love a good school costume? Like, that is a classic, never goes out of style, and it's so quintessential Halloween. Oh, uh, lifestyle expert John Salas, tell folks, I know you mentioned you're on Instagram, but tell folks how they can find you. Yes, follow me at Hello Salas. Ask me any questions. If you're in a crisis, you don't know what to wear this Halloween, you know, send me a message and I will happily answer your questions and give you advice and, you know, make sure this Halloween is going to be one to remember. Hey, next on SA Live, people have so many questions when it comes to voting this year. We're helping clear up the confusion and make sure your voice is heard. What you need to know before you head to the polls, that's straight ahead. Well, with the 2020 general election upon us, AARP is fighting to protect voters ages 50 and older. And you can make your voice heard, of course, on the issues that matter. Joining us now to tell us more is AARP volunteer John Vasquez. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Mike. OK, first of all, early voting starts tomorrow. How long does it last? Well, early voting uh, starts tomorrow and it will continue until October 30th. And you can vote at any polling location in Bear County, but be sure to check locations and hours before you go to vote uh, at, at those locations. And even though you can vote at any location, it's got to be if you're a Bear County resident, only in Bear County and the other counties, correct? 
That is correct. You have to be a Bear County resident to be able to vote at a Bear County location. If you're outside of Bear County, then please go to your local county. They will have their uh, web, their locations as well. Okay, what should folks know about? Is there anything new this year, anything different? Well, uh, the Secretary of State has issued an extensive list of health protocols for polling stations and is encouraging Texans to make use of early voting period. So if you go to go vote, we urge you, and, and the Secretary of State urges you to wear a mask, use hand sanitizer, and minimize distance between yourselves and others. This way, you'll be able to safely vote as well as, as other persons. Okay, so how about those folks that want to just wait till the actual election day on the 3rd? Well, election day is November 3rd, and you can vote that day as well. And you can, in, ta in, in Bear County, vote at any uh, polling center. So that's changed from uh, previous elections where you had to go to your polling location. Uh, but now in, in Bear County, you can go to any polling locations. And uh, if you want to go cast your ballot, you, you may do so. But again, please use the same guidelines. That's the, I think one of the best things is now that you, even on election day, you can go to any of the polling centers in Bear County. So why, you know, a lot of people say it's only one vote. My vote doesn't really matter. Why vote? What's your best sales pitch? We have important races on the ballot. Of course, I think unless you're very out of touch, you know that we have a presidential race, but we also have a U.S. Senate race between Senator John Cornyn and his opponent, M.J. Hager. All 36 representative seats in the Congress, U.S. Congress, are up for election. Uh, there are also several state Supreme Court seats up and several state Senate seats, and all 150 Texas House seats are also up. And here in Bear County, in, depending where you are, you may be able to vote on uh, pre-K. You also uh, whether or not we have workforce development, as well as on the issue of the uh, uh, Advanced Transportation District for VIA. So all those are on the ballot uh, here in Bear County, or parts of Bear County. Okay, well, if you'd like more information from AARP about this election season, you can give them a call at 866-227-7443 or visit the website aarp.org slash TXVotes. John, always good chatting with you. Have a good day. You too. Good to talk with you. Hey, still ahead on SA Live. It sounds scary, but it's more than spooky. See how Duzeum is taking kids inside the human brain. And if your kids have been cooped up, it might be time to get out and have a play date. We're live at a local spot where kids and parents can get let their imagination and creativity run wild. Welcome back to SA Live. Well, earlier we showed you some mom day crafts that can definitely be therapeutic. And as Jen shows you, she's having a lot of fun too. But if you're looking for something for the kiddos to enjoy, Pinspiration Craft Studio has some play date fun for those little ones. And Jen Tobias Drusky is there right now to show us some of those <laughs> activities. Hey guys, yes, but let me show you first my finished product there. So that's the one that we dipped and then we topped it off. His head came off. <laughs> We'll fix that, don't worry. We got hot glue everywhere. But Christine, I'm so excited for this because I have an eight-year-old and a six-year-old uh -huh. and they would love this. Tell me about these fun play date setups that you have. So here at Pinspiration, we have so many crafts for kids of all ages, young, um, and these play dates are perfect for them. So we have a camping play date and then the rainbow play date. And what's really fun is every kid gets to do at least three crafts for each one. Okay. And then they each get a delicious glass of lemonade and they get to make their own little special treat mm -hmm. so for camping they paint this they make their own TP and a compass bracelet they create their own little fun little trail mix and then for our rainbow play date they get to do the alcohol ink which you're gonna do a mug they get their lemonade spin art and they make that super cute, so cute. rainbow that. treat <laughs> Um, so it's for two kids, it's only $42. So it's a great deal and it's a lot of fun for all the kids. And I think it'd be great if you showed everybody the alcohol ink tile. So we just drop. Um, you just drop the different colors, go wherever you want. There is no right or wrong answer for this. Okay. And then you can pick a different color and then you just drop it That's where you want it. And you just keep adding and adding. And it's okay if they get in, right? Sure, uh-huh. Don't you just love art? It starts to blend. You can mess up. Um, we've got, oh my gosh, so many different colors. So there's something for all the different little kids. All right, and how long does this play date? Because uh, I think parents would want to know, mm -hmm. do they just drop them off or how? Do 
How does it work? No, they usually the parents are here. Um, having fun too, right? Uh huh. And then obviously it's great. We've got tons of stuff that the parents can do. So the play dates are about uh, an hour, hour and a half. So just enough time for mom or dad, actually, uh, to have fun of their own. So yes, you can't forget about the dads because no, there's so many things for uh -huh. everybody here, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And one of the neat things about these uh, alcohol ink tiles is once you get it done, part of the play date that wooden easel that's right there, uh, the kids mm -hmm. get to paint it, then they get to decorate it with whatever they want. We've got everything from glitter to gems. We've got flowers oh, and butterflies, oh, pom poms. So it's perfect for them when they get home, so they can put it up, you know, on their dresser or next to their bed. Um, and, so and it's keep it a lot of fun. And uh, girls love glitter, as you can see. One of the girls that did that decided they wanted it to be all glitter, um, and there's really nothing wrong with that. And the best thing is, you know, for the moms out there that don't want glitter throughout their house, that's what we're here for. Yes. Um, keep the glitter it. here. I don't know if we can, Dusty, but I'm going to take you over here really fast because they have this amazing party room. Christine, you can follow. Um, and they have a party today at 2, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. uh, but take a look in here, guys. This is so cool. I know we don't have much time left, but I mean, you can do a party here. They set up everything for you. I guess it's Caroline's birthday. She's coming in here at two o'clock. But uh, again, a very much a happy place. They, and they're located here in Chavineau. So just come mm -hmm. out and have a good old time, right? Parties. One. Thank we do so all the work, set up and clean up, and they just have a great time. All right, well, sounds like a good time to me, guys. I'm gonna send it back over to you. Oh, that looks fantastic. Right? So Thank much fun. Thank you, Jen. All right, hey, next on SA Live, it sounds spooky, but it's just plain fun. The new adventure at the museum takes kids inside the human brain. Don't go anywhere. Fall Traveling Exhibit is coming to the Museum celebrating beautiful minds. Here to tell us more is Meredith Adobe, Vice President of Exhibits. Good afternoon. Hi, how are you? I'm doing really well. Okay, the Museum's always been a supporter of joyful learning for all. So how does this new exhibit celebrate how we all learn differently? Yeah, well, so I just wanted to explain, I'm, I'm wearing a mask because it's uh, the protocol here at the Museum. We have many, many safety procedures in place um, to keep families safe. Uh, but yeah, so I'm standing in front of Beautiful Minds. Um, we're so excited to have this exhibit here at the museum um, so we can celebrate all learners. Um, so really, you know, it celebrates how people think outside the box when faced with the challenges of dyslexia. Um, you can learn about dyslexic individuals who have changed history, such as John Lennon, Albert Einstein, um, and you know, all guests can really learn about the left and the right side of the brain, how it works. Um, they can also have fun playing word games, puzzles, and digital interactives because, of course, it's the museum, so it's all going to be about joyful learning, uh, learning through play, and learning together as a family. Okay, and there's also an installation artist involved in this, so she won a pretty big award, right? Yes, absolutely. So um, her name is Sarah Sudoff. She is the 2020 artist in residence here at the museum. I'm um, standing in front of her installation. It's a series of glowing orbs. It's called the Reading Brain. And it's the actual data of children with dyslexia reading. Um, so you can see the orbs light up and that is actually the brain regions lighting up as these children are reading. Um, guests can dance underneath and jump between the regions of the brain uh, to trigger the installation. Uh, and that represents how when we read, we're activating parts of the brain. Very interesting. So what else can people expect to, to see at the exhibit? Um, so there's a really cool local element to this exhibit. Um, over here, you can see a series of interviews. And these are of children um, before and after intervention with dyslexia. And so they're really, really powerful stories, um, some cool local elements. And I think it's going to be a real opportunity for people to connect um, with others who, um, have, who have dyslexia and kind of their stories behind it. Um, and then there's also some great tools and resources for families that want to learn more about dyslexia. And you had some support from the Celebrate Dyslexia for this exhibit. So what about this group? Yeah, this is a fantastic local uh, partner. Um, they help children navigate the education system, children who may have dyslexia. Um, and they are one of the, the great resources that families can, can use 
So if you're a little concerned, um, and maybe your child's struggling a little bit with reading, or maybe your child has dyslexia, it's a great exhibit to come to. It's a great organization to connect with. Um, I think it's truly, truly inspirational, and I think it will really empower a lot of children. Well, it sounds fascinating, and the museum's new fall traveling exhibit, Beautiful Minds, Dyslexia, and the Creative Advantage, is now open. And for more information, give them a call at 210-212-4453 or visit the Duceum museum.org. Meredith, great chatting with you. Thank you. Thank you. Next on SA Live, crossing a major milestone why a local hospital group has something special to celebrate. It's been a challenging year, but that doesn't mean we can't celebrate the milestones in our lives. Methodist Healthcare Ministries of South Texas is celebrating its 25th anniversary this year, and it continues to play a role in helping to support resilient families and build thriving communities across South Texas. Joining us now is President and CEO of Methodist Healthcare Ministries, Jamie Wesolowski. Good afternoon. Hi, Fiona. Good to see you. First of all, congratulations on celebrating 25 years. Thank you very much. It's been a great 25 years. Tell us about Methodist Healthcare Ministries and what this milestone means to the communities you serve. Yeah, so first of all, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Methodist Healthcare Ministries is a uh, faith-based nonprofit organization. Uh, and what we do is we focus on providing health care for low-income uh, uninsured families throughout uh, South Texas. So we, we serve 74 counties of South Texas. So it's a very large territory, about a third of Texas. And we do that in three different ways. Uh, one is to provide direct patient care services. Uh, a second way is to uh, make a strategic grant making. And then the third way is community partnerships. And you know, in our direct services, uh, one thing we do is we have two very large clinics in San Antonio, our Wesley and Dixon Health Centers. Uh, we do not accept Medicaid or Medicare or insurance at all. So it truly is for the working poor that fall within that insurance gap. Uh, so by fulfilling our mission of serving humanity to honor God, we've been really blessed to develop uh, great partnerships with 160 funded partners. And to date, we've, uh, uh, we've uh, invested almost one and a half billion dollars uh, to those uh, families uh, that you talk about, those resilient families that we work on. We're also the half owner of Methodist Healthcare System uh, here in uh, San Antonio. Not many people know that, but uh, that's the largest uh, hospital system and healthcare system in South Texas. What has Methodist Healthcare Ministries done to support families hit hard during these challenging times? So our team responded quickly to develop virtual offerings uh, that our community-based wellness programs could provide to patients and clients looking for ways to remain active while practicing good social distancing. Uh, we also recognized uh, that a number of our nonprofit partners across South Texas were, were really hurting um, as, as the fundraising that they relied on was, was being impacted. So on top of the $32 million in funding that we uh, have allocated for nonprofit partners this year, we approved an additional $4 million in emergency grant funding to support nonprofits in their response to the pandemic. All right, we've got about 30 seconds, but how can folks watching right now take advantage of all the incredible services you offer? Well, the easiest thing to do uh, is to visit our webpage, and that is uh, mhm.org. You can learn uh, all the different ways that you can, uh, uh, all the resources we have available to help people. All right. Well, Methodist Healthcare Ministries is dedicated to creating access to health care for the uninsured and low income families across South Texas. For more information, just call 210-692-0234 or visit mhm.org. Jamie, thank you so much for your time and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Support local. Tomorrow we take you to a family owned shop with a variety, get it, like variety, of flavors and other fun treats. And Day of the Dead celebrations are brought to life with augmented reality. How you can learn more about the history behind this holiday or remembrance with a QR code. Tomorrow at 1 on SA Live. Earlier, we asked you, is there a strange smell that you love? 
Shea says, some gasoline smells okay. We're trying to figure that out. Yeah. There's a difference between like unleaded regular versus... and unleaded, but yeah, gasoline, fresh cut grass, that smells very good too. Except if it's wet. That's not good. No. No. Mm -mm. Yeah. Underneath the, the lawnmower, the wet grass caked up underneath. Sorry. All right. Hey. Well, support local. Tomorrow we take you to a family-owned shop with a variety. Get it? Tea. Yes. I got it. First time. <laughs>